I'm going to have a quick talk about pressure mats and a few simple techniques that you can utilize to build your own for cheap and pretty quickly and get something that, that works and something that, that's customizable and unique to your project and something that can fit within the aesthetics of your project, can be the right size and something that you make yourself. Um, so there's a few different ways you can go about this. I'm going to start off with the simplest way, which is definitely not the best way but it's, it depends on what you need from your your mat um the the button method like its name implies it gives you basically a large button that you can step on as in it will tell you if there is a presence on it if it's being pressed or it will tell you if it's not being pressed but it won't necessarily tell you the amount of pressure that's on it whether or not that's something that you really care about depends on the project and the application but it's a good place to start and this method is very very straightforward um in this in this in these pictures, there's cardboard. Um, we use cardboard for it, but you can also use more robust materials, um, such as, as thin plywood or, or foam board or something like that. And, and actually, ultimately, if it's gonna be up and installed for an extended period of time, I do recommend using more robust materials. Probably plywood would be best, but these pictures use um, cardboard just to kind of, you know, um, show how simple it is right and you also need some aluminum foil or or conductive um, material you can also use copper tape but aluminum foil is cheaper right basically the idea is that you will attach aluminum foil to each end uh, to one side of, of two different pieces of cardboard the and the two pieces of cardboard should be the same size they're going to be the tops and bottoms of your sensor um, and you can just tape it or you can use some sort of other method but tape is nice because it does give you a border around it that is uh, non-connective and it gives you um, a place where you can attach the spacer. So um, you also need to make sure that you have wires coming out of each sides of these plates. So you can simply strip the wire so you have a, a long length of the conductive part and you can just tape that to aluminum foil and that would work. Uh, you could try to solder it there or, or fasten it in some other way. Um, I definitely recommend trying you know, to make it as robust as you can is if for whatever reason, if these wires um, no longer are touching their appropriate pieces of aluminum foil, the sensor will no longer work. So you want to make sure that, that this system is relatively robust, but basically you attach wires to the aluminum foil. Then you create a spacer, which um, goes around the border of the sensor, which should be the same size as your other two pieces. And this is, uh, in this example, is made out of cardboard, right? And it's about an inch thick or so. And then that's it. You basically um, seal the spacer in between the two conductive plates, and voila, you have your sensor. Uh, the important thing to, to notice or to, to mention is that like I said this is a button so I'll only tell you if somebody's there or not and if you want to use it with an Arduino or in a project you do need to have a pull down resistor on whichever side of the button that you are reading uh, to make sure that you have um, appropriate readings when the, the sensor is not being interacted with otherwise you don't really know what you're going to get. Cool. So we're going to move on to um, a material called Velostat, which is very interesting. Uh, it's a type of packaging material that's made out of polymeric foil that's impregnated with carbon, basically meaning that it is a special type of plastic that has a bunch of carbon inserted into it, and carbon is conductive. So what this means is that um, because this plastic is kind of stretchy and, and you can you can compress it, it's kind of soft, so it actually changes its resistance when stretched or pressed, giving it, um, making it very interesting for hobbyists and, and makers and designers, because we can use Velostat to build our own FSRs, our own pressure sensors, and a bunch of different types of sensors, like uh, stretch sensors as well. Um, this material is relatively cheap, and it's, it's really entering into the maker hobbyist um, area and you can even buy it specifically from retailers such as Adafruit and Amazon um, but there is some in the hybrid lab that you can use. Cool so there's a few different ways that we can utilize Velostat in order to make um, pressure sensors they you know they're all kind of basically the same idea you know um, create some sort of mechanism that will compress the Velostat and um, another mechanism to make sure that you basically read it as a resistor so you are reading one side and then the other side with a wire. Um, so the first one um, 
will basically have your two connective plates on one side of the sensor. So they both are on the bottom or they both are on the top. Then you have a layer of velostat next. And then on top of that, foam tape. And then on top of the foam tape, which is not shown here, you would want to have um, plywood or, or the actual material that people are stepping on top of. And the idea is that as um, they step on top of it, the foam tape compresses. So does the velostat, which changes the resistance between these two sides of um, the wire. Um, it says single a PCB so you can actually use a PCB which is a good application and we have the other mills so you can mill a divider in between or you can just kind of rip off a little bit of the copper um, and then that's easy to solder to which is fantastic right or you could use copper tape or aluminum foil it doesn't really matter but as long as it's a conductive plate cool so on this method I used birch plywood eighth inch I used two thin pieces of copper tape and then a small piece of velostat here and Maybe I, I probably should have used slightly more velostat um, to cover a greater area. It probably would have given me a more reliable reading, but you know th this ended up actually working fine. So as you can see, I, I'm just basically taping the velostat on top of the copper tape. Um, so it's bridging the, the pieces of tape. Um, then, and it's kind of going off to the side here, and I ended up soldering some wires directly to the copper tape which is nice. And then I um, add some, some extra scotch tape to kind of make sure that the copper tape uh, doesn't move, doesn't come up. And then I put the, this sort of this double layer foam adhesive on top of the velostat. Now the same double layer foam adhesive is also going around the border of the sensor. And what makes uh, how this works really well, and part of the reason why it works really well is the fact that there's it's actually thicker in the center of the sensor, right? Because you have the two layers uh, um, consisting of the copper tape as well as the velostat, and then you have the foam on top of that. When on the outside, you only have the layer of foam, meaning that if only a little bit of pressure is put on the sensor, and even if it's kind of put on the side, it will actually compress this velostat and will give you a reading. Cool. So let's talk about the second method, which is basically pretty much the same as the first method, but with some subtle differences. All of these are, are pretty much the same, right? You have a conductive material on two sides, um, of the sensor and then you have some s the velostat in the middle which which will change its resistance when the mechanism that you create pressurizes the velostat so this is the velostat sandwich where we have um, you can have ground on the you know it doesn't really matter which end that you attach to um, ground or, or power or you know your reading pin it doesn't really matter but what matters is that you have your two conductive layers and the velostat is in the middle with this one instead of um, just having the conductive layers side by side so um, this example uses just pretty much like card stock so sort of like a um, heavy heavy paper so you can get two pieces of this paper you can just put a piece of <coughs> the conductive foil on top on each side and then simply put the velostat tape down on top of one and then there you go you have your velostat sandwich and then you put the two plates on top of each other in this picture you would want to have uh want to make sure that you have a conductive buffer to so that the copper tape doesn't touch um the other end <coughs> it has to go through the velostat and you also have to solder some leads to it but that's pretty much it and then this last method this last main category that we're going to talk about is using conductive foam and from my own personal experience, I found this to actually be the least reliable and to, be, and to give me the most trouble. And it's not something that can really actually be used for pressure pads that's, that's meant to sense a person stepping on it. Um, but you can make your own smaller scale FSRs. And um, th this may be, yeah, a good, a good method depending on the application, on exactly what you're doing. So basically, there's a special type of packaging foam that's usually used when um, selling integrated circuits or small electronic components. And th this foam is specifically designed to be um, conductive. And it uses a similar method, actually, as a velostat, where it's a polyethylene foam and it's filled with carbon. So... Um, and it's, it's, it's made to be pretty durable and reliable. Um, there's two different grades and two different kind of um, thicknesses or, or robustness. Uh, both of them can be used for this, although um, I think that the cushion grade is, is a little bit easier to work with. So, we, and the, the basic idea um, 
is that you have two conductive plates on the top and bottom. You have, you know, your your wood or whatever, um, your cardboard or whatever the, the outsides of your sensor are going to be on the outside. And then you have this conductive foam in the middle. Um, you don't necessarily have to have these ca cable ties or wooden blocks or anything like that. But that's um, showing what's, what's going on in this example. So um, in this example, there's just two pieces of these are PCBs. So it's uh, printed circuit boards. This is what they use to make integrated circuits. You can find a bunch in the hybrid lab. And it's basically a substrate, which is usually um, kind of like a... Uh, fiberglass or, or, or made out of paper or some sort of non-conductive material on the bottom and then there's copper foil on the top. Um, what's nice is this is really easy to solder to. Uh, so you just need two pieces of um, you know this conductive material say the PCB um, you need to have your wire soldered to it and then you need to have a piece of this um, conductive foam as well and then you can just attach the conductive foam um, to one side of the PCB and then voila <laughs> you may you make a sandwich and it's basically the same as a Velstat sandwich, right? So cool. So those are some you know, a handful of ways, four different ways that you can make your own pressure pads, and hopefully that is helpful. But one thing that you really need to consider when doing this is, is how does it feel to interact with them, and how does it feel to actually step on it, right? And and um, a lot of the examples that I show kind of fail at this, and you. And there's different ways you can go about it, right? And there's a lot of different materials you can use. For instance, you could use acrylic. And you may have seen the sensors that I showed to some groups where you can also do the same technique, but instead of using Velsat, you can put an actual FSR in there, right? Um, so you can do all these with an actual FSR um, and then sandwich it using kind of that foam. But um, you know, acrylic is weird to walk on. It's kind of like glass, and and it's usually relatively thick. People will be afraid of kind of cracking it, so it's not necessarily a good way to go. Um, wood is interesting. Wood is something that you can do, um, but you know, it may seem out of place or weird. Um, depending on the context of your piece. So um, it, you may consider thinking about how to obscure, you know, these sensors or how to kind of hide it. And there's a lot of different materials that you can use to, to kind of um, encapsulate these pressure mats and make them easier to interact with and kind of more pleasant for the person that's actually doing it, right? So one example is you can use self-healing cutting mats. So you can find these for relatively cheap on Amazon. You can cut it up and then it's a relatively discreet and sort of like a floor mat, right? You can also buy treadmill mats, which is a decent option. Um, yoga mats is another option. These sort of, these these foam pleasant things to, to, to stand on that are meant to kind of stand on. Um, so you can put your kind of sensor underneath this use it as as kind of a carpet uh, speaking of which you could use a carpet or shop mats and and kind of hide your technology underneath it or um, how do you make it yeah so that it is not really weird and awful to step on and you feel like you're going to break it um, but ultimately there's a million different ways you can do it and i be creative and see um, what you can come up with like for instance i found this post online where somebody took a sponge a thumbtack and steel wool and then was able to create a pressure sensor using that which is totally brilliant and there's a million different ways you can approach it so ultimately you know the idea is the same which is you have two conductive sides um, it can they can either be next to each other they can be on top of each other um, by default these two plates should not be touching and then when somebody puts pressure on the device then the plates touch or the, pl the plates compress a material in which w uh, a material whose resistance changes according to pressure cool awesome that's it hopefully that was helpful let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to help you out